Now, Zachariah Branch waiting for the punt from Jack Bowmeister. The crowd anticipating it as well. What will Branch do with the ball? Makes the catch. Steps up and gets a few yards. Gets away up the middle of the field. He's at the 40. He's at the 35-30. Down the sideline to the 20. Out of bounds at the 15. Zachariah Branch has given the Trojans a chance with a great punt return. And the Trojans are set up. First and 10 at the Utah 15-yard line. How do you do? How about that, Pete? The crowd's been waiting all night. They've been on their feet, and their number one delivers. Punches it right up the gut, takes it up the middle, makes a couple guys miss, shakes it, and it hits to the sideline, gives the punter a little wiggle there, and almost gets it to the house, but sets up the Trojans on the, what, 11-yard line here with a minute 52. Let's see if Caleb Williams can get these guys in the end zone. That's the key. 65-yard punt return for Zachariah Branch, who, frankly, if he isn't the freshman of the year in the United States, I don't know who would be better. I have not seen a better freshman in a long time, especially in the kick and punt return game. Holy mackerel. First and 10, he actually went out of bounds at the 11-yard line. First and 10 for the Trojans, basically first and goal at the 11, down by five, late in the ball game to be sure, a minute 52 to go. And the Trojans still have a timeout of their pocket if they need it. Snap back to Caleb. He'll run it himself to the 10, down to the five. He's going to go. Touchdown! The Trojans have come back to take the lead. How do you do? Just a look. They go. Looks like they're going to go for two on that pay. This is a QB draw. Spread everybody out. They pulled Jarrett Kingston from the tackle position right up the middle of the field. Was the lead blocker for Caleb right there. And Caleb does a little shimmy stay, steps to the outside, and does the rest. Looks like the offense is going to be out here and go for two to, to push the lead to three. All right. Caleb with Austin Jones next to him. Tight end, strong right. Lake McCree coming to the near hash mark. We've got Michael Jackson and Brendan Rice to the far side. They're the receivers in the pattern. Double tight end right with Jude Wolf in the ball game. Trojans going for two. Have come all the way back from down 14 at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Snap. Back to Caleb Williams. Drops back to pass. Being rushed, throws off his back foot. It is over the head of Michael Jackson, incomplete. And the lead will stay at one. USC 32, Utah 31, with a minute 46 remaining in what we think is the rest of the ball game, but who knows. Now, if you're Utah and you are not a great passing team, you really can't afford to run the ball all day long. You've got to move the ball up the field. You've got to get in field goal position and give your guy, Becker, who has kicked a 51-yarder this year, a chance. The 51-yarder would be from the 34-yard line. So they've got to get to the Trojan 34 to give him a good chance. Yeah, not something really Bryson is, is, is comfortable doing. The, the Utah's quarterback has not really led, led these one of these kind of drives all year. Uh, not really an offense that thrives in these kind of situations. Want to ground and pound and kind of work the middle of the field here. Trojans have an opportunity to, 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 to do something special here on defense. Got to find a way to win. That game-changing play, the punt return by Zachariah Branch, brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Athletic Brewing Craft's great-tasting and award-winning non-alcoholic brews available in-store and online at athleticbrewing.com. Use code USC10 at checkout for 10% off your first six-pack order. Exclusions and conditions apply. Don't have to tell you how important this kickoff return coverage is, or does Utah take the fair catch and bring it out to the 25 again. Lynch approaches, kicks it, and it will go into the end zone. A little extra adrenaline for Dennis Lynch, I feel. <sighs> that PAT, by the way, for Lynch, brought to you. He didn't kick a PAT that time, but all the Trojan PATs and field goals brought to you by Terranea Resort, a luxury resort like no other. So, three times out remaining for Utah. They've got the ball at their own 25-yard line, first and 10. They need to get to the Trojan 34 to set up a potential game-winning field goal for Cole Becker, the transfer from Colorado out of Northern California. Here we go. Trojan crowd screaming. I'm screaming. You're screaming. Jackson in the backfield. Barnes back to pass on first down. Pumps once. Rush from the pocket. Throws underneath. Complete. Diving out to the 20. 
six-yard line is all, though. Here's Jaquindon Jackson. Good pressure again. Applied by Bear Alexander. Second and nine. That would have been better for him to drop that ball there, really. Yep. Uh, now the clock's running. They don't, you don't burn a timeout with all three of them left. Barnes, the shotgun with the snap. In trouble. Stets it right side. Throws it through the hands. Through the hands of Money Parks. Incomplete. Third. And 10. And you know, of course, they're going to go for it on fourth down, down by a point. Boy, these two teams are pretty good against each other, aren't they? Yeah, a really good throw by Bryson Barnes there. They're just money parks. That one goes through his hands. Not something that you see a lot, just attacking the outside on this defense, on this offense. It is not a comfortable thing that Bryson Barnes and this receiving staff want to see. out for Delvon Bailey, number 17, the big guy at 6'5, 210. On the right side out of Rancho Bernardo. Crunch set to the right, third and 10. Bailey, the motion man. Got to be careful with him. Barnes wants to throw and will on third and ten. Here comes the rush. Throw over the middle complete. Out to the 34-yard line. Ball was dropped, but they reel him down. Short of a first down. It'll be fourth and one. And a late hit on Bear Alexander, it looks like. I don't see a flag. I see a hat. Personal foul. Oh, back there. Looking the passer. Number 90 defense. High contact. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. They'll take the penalty instead of the play. They would have gotten nine. I would have had a fourth and one. Instead, it's a first and ten. It's added at the end of the play. So they get the nine and the 15 out to the 49-yard line. And the Utes not set up yet, but they're in pretty good position. Yeah, just got to pull off on that. If you're Bear Alexander, just as his face mask hits Bryson Barnes' face mask, and they're going to call that there. Just got to find a way to lay off and not touch the head of the quarterback. Previous play is under review. Why? It was accidental contact. It's not a targeting call for sure, but it was definitely his head, his face made contact with the quarterback's face, and when they see that, they're going to any kind of touch, any kind of hit to the head of the quarterback, they're going to throw the play. Our official review is brought to you by Life Law, Injury Law Made Simple. First down, Utah for the moment at their own 49-yard line. After review, it was determined the number 90 committed a personal foul, targeting penalty. Number 90 is disqualified for the remainder of the game. Well, Bear Alexander has been given the boot, and he'll miss the first half of the Cal game next week. And you think that was a correct call? No, I, I don't believe that that should be uh, significant enough for a disqualification and the removal from the first half of the next game kind of befuddling to me. I mean, obviously, they're going to give him the 15-yard penalty, but for the, for the player to get ejected for targeting, it, it's uh, pretty ridiculous. Trojans defense being asked to make a big play. Once again, they had him pinned with a fourth and one. Who knows what they would have done on that fourth down play. Assuming they would have made it, they'd still have the ball. Still got it here on a first and ten. Motion on the line for Yukon. That'll back him up five. It'll be first and 15. Every yard counts here when you're talking about a winning field goal attempt. False start. Number 55 offense. Spencer Five Bono. yard penalty. Remains first down. The left tackle. True freshman. He's maybe the only guy on the field that doesn't have lots of experience in big games and situations like this. First and 15 back at the 44. How much time, you ask? A minute ten. Gentry and Davis in the Trojan lineup defensively. Tight end on this near side. Motion this way. Barnes will keep off the right side. 50, 45, hit hard by Zion Branch, but he gets to the Trojan 43. They need about nine more yards to be in the outside range for Cole Becker to try to win the game at the gun. Yeah, Bryce He's got a Barnes. second down and two and a half. Took a shot there. It doesn't look like he's he's trying to figure the things out there. Barnes with Jaquindon Jackson to the right. Clock runs with 45 seconds remaining. Barnes wants to throw. Being rushed by Tafoo. Throws the sideline pattern over the head of the Trojans bench. Incomplete third and three. Well, here's the problem for Utah. It's not the clock with 35 seconds yet. Plus, they can start to stop it three times. But the third down and two and a half. They've got to get a first down in two plays to give Becker a chance for a field goal. Yeah, Bryson Barnes on that. He took a shot on that play before. He, he lowered his helmet, so Zion Branch had a lower hit, so they both met helmet to helmet. That was not Zion Branch's fault. But Bryson Shaw, Bryson Barnes, excuse me, 
Looked like he uh, got a little woozy after that play. Third down and two and a half. Need to get to the 41. They're on the 43 and a half. Barnes in the shotgun. Jaquindon Jackson to his right side. Hand off to Jackson. Into the line. Got the first down. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It looked, it looked like, like it by the naked short. spot. But now, maybe not. I don't think they got much of a spot there. and They might review this spot. It looks like it's going to be short by a half a First yard. Time out. Utah. Utah has taken a timeout. And uh, they're talking about it right now, about the call of the linesman. The four referees are gathered together, and they are calling it a fourth down. So fourth and a half a yard. Got to get to the 41 proper. They're on the 41 and a half. 25 seconds left. They need a yard for a first down on fourth down. Can't afford to flinch on the line of scrimmage and lose yardage penalty-wise. And they need about seven yards to give Becker a chance at his career-long field goal. Right now, it would be a 58-yarder. About 59. That would be too long, I do believe. Wildcat. Wildcat formation. Jaquindon Jackson. He'll run it himself. He gets the first down to the 40. Stop at the clock at 17. Jackson gets the first down at the 40. Got to mark the ball. <laughs> Utah's got its times out remaining, two of them. They need about six more yards to get in field goal range, and you know they'd like to get him as close as they can. What is going on here? And now whistles. Are they going to review it? Current ruling on the field is the runner made the line to gain for a first down. The previous take a look play at is under replay review. Jordan down there. Let's uh, see what he saw. He's kind of right in line with what's going on. Jordan, what do you know? Yeah, a really strange clock management here by Utah. They had all these timeouts. They're down to 19 seconds left. They only have about three plays. And, yeah, sure, they can get into long field goal range here. But with all the time and the timeouts, yeah, they really should have way more time left on this clock and just sort of let it run out. And now they're looking at it to review this spot to see if he even got it. Obviously, the game would be over if they were to review it and decide that he came up short of the first down. That's what the referee is taking a look at. I don't understand why they stopped the clock to put more time back on. Obviously, it stops on a first down, but then they should stop After review, and get it started. Really on the field, the runner making the line again for a first down stands as called. Couldn't tell. It's just a, a pile of bodies. You really couldn't tell where the ball was. It's an official review brought to you by Life Law. Injury law made simple. So, first and 10 at the 40. 19 seconds remaining in the game. Utah needs about six yards to give Becker a chance for his career-long field goal. The Trojans need a defensive stop for a couple of plays at least. They're talking to Bryson Barnes, the Utah quarterback, about the timing situation and what needs to be done in certain situations. Now they back off away from him. Jackson goes in motion. Barnes wants to throw short. He does, incomplete. Bailey fell down, it looked like. Romello Height was in quickly on Barnes. Incomplete pass, second and 10. 16 seconds remaining. So now you're looking at a situation where you've got three plays to try to get more than six yards, basically, right? Yeah, you, can, you still got two timeouts, so you can still right. run the ball here. They can hit the timeout, but uh, they gotta, they got to be productive on that run. The Trojans stop them short on that run and be a win for the Trojans here. Good pressure there by Romello Height getting the back real quick. Jackson, the one back. You still got to look at Vele. He's matched up on the far side against Christian Wallen Wallace. Motion, flags down. Motion. It looked like Money Parks came out at the wrong time, and two guys were moving, two guys were shifting at the same time. Part of the snap, they'll start with a 61 offense, five-yard penalty, remains second down. All right, so second and 15, every yard counts, back one. at the 45. That's a big one, because now it makes it about 10 yards to gain to get to that 35, 34 area where you might have a chance to kick a field goal. 16 seconds away. Park splits wide to the right side. Crunch set on the near side. Barnes sends Bailey in motion. He zip-zaps back this way. Barnes looks left. Being rushed. 
He'll run. 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. They're in position to kick a game-winning field goal. They let Barnes get away one more time. Five seconds left in the game. They'll bring the field goal unit out. Maybe run a play to the center of the field to give Cole Becker an easy shot right over the middle. Yeah, just a shame right there. Pass rush, pass the line, rush the top of the quarterback right there not able to retrace their steps and get back in the lane and bryson barnes is a smart thing can't really make those kind of throws but i'm going to beat you with my feet here as the trojans get out of their rush lanes and give them an opportunity to make a play and credit bryson barnes for making that play he's getting downfield trojans losing their eyes didn't run much all year but runs when he has to in the most critical situations ran for a touchdown tonight and in critical spots he likes to run the football he knows how and he did it and he sets them up for a game-winning field goal try i yeah, just have to be more aware if you're the trojans bryson bar he's not going to hurt you with your arms the only way you can do that is pick it up with his feet there and just lose sight of the quarterback and he makes you pay now they'll try to run a uh, running play with five seconds left and one timeout left and they were now there's about 80 people on the field for utah they got so many people on the field there they decide to bring in the field goal unit now the ball will be spotted right hash mark at the 27 a 37 yard kick bo meester the punter is the holder the snap is grief from glendora and the snap is back it hits the holder in the head but the trojans had just called time usc their final well, what a game. The Trojans scored too soon, as it turns out. Scored with a minute 52 left and ended up looking like they were going to win it. And, of course, the two-point conversions that they tried, both of them, lots of pressure applied by Utah. Caleb had to throw bad balls, and he threw them out of the end zone. Neither two-point conversion was successful, or this would be for a tie. Yeah, woulda, shoulda, coulda here, but Bryson Shaw was able to lead his team down the field. It was a, a help to part. Uh, the Bear Alexander penalty was huge, but you thought Utah in this in that kind of circumstance, not an offense built in those for those kind of situations, especially without their guy Cam Rising. But give it to Bryson Barnes, who was able to lead his team down here thanks to a penalty, like we said, and, and making a big run. Do you put a guy like Deuce Robinson up front now? Big guys, the biggest guys you got to jump up in the air. That's, a, that's almost all you got, right? Yeah, they've. Uh, Change the rule about rushing the snapper anymore. You can you jump. Can't, you can't do that anymore. So you can't rush him. You can jump though. And you can also come in from the side. Oh, now they're oh, going to run a play. So the Trojans change. Robinson was in there, and they change their personnel. The Trojans now change their defensive personnel, and Utah's going to run a play. Barnes runs over, takes a knee at the 21. Utah will expend its final timeout with three seconds left. And now they'll bring in the field goal group. Cole Becker, a junior from Northern California. He was an All-American in high school. 30 for 40 in his career coming into this game. His career long is 56, but he kicked that at Colorado. That's up at height, at uh, altitude. Here, he's 5 for 7 coming into this one. Kicked a field goal from 33 earlier. So six of eight, well within his distance for sure. And this one will be even shorter than the other, a little bit longer. From the 28-yard line, a 38-yard field goal to win the game for the Utes and send the Trojans to their first defeat in conference play of the 2023 season. The crowd hoping against hope. But something goes awry, it certainly has for the Trojans before. The snap is back, the kick is up, the kick is long enough, high enough, and perfect. And the Utah Utes come streaming onto the field from the sideline to celebrate a great comeback win, one of the greatest wins in their school's history, you'd have to say, on the road at the Coliseum against the Trojans in a rematch of the Pac-12 championship game. And it's the Utes to cheer last here at the Coliseum as the field goal is good and utah wins it by a final score of 34 to 32 what a ball game